welcome to lnp renewable system director today we are going to discuss some of the basics of access control system so this session we had classified into five different parts okay now in the part one we might be discussing some of the basics in general and in, in the other parts okay company wise in specific some of the controller basics we will try to learn today especially the hardware side so what are the things that we are going to discuss today in the part one what is this access control system where will i use this access control system how access control system looks like and what are the important specifications about the access control system how it is installed and the wire and how its system architecture or the wiring topology is planned in buildings metro stations and airports so first let us try to find out the solution for what is this access control system so basically this access control system it refers to the practice of restricting the entrance to a property or a building through a authorized person okay so before the invention of this access control system normally uh, watchmans or uh, security personnel will be there who will be restricting the entry and exit inside the concerned buildings but after the invention of this access controllers okay access control system okay um, the entry and uh, the exit and the entry everything is being restricted and controlled and monitored in a efficient way okay so what are the basic systems of this access control system basically this access system consists of cpu okay it has a controller okay cpu then so if there is a cpu for sure there will be some input devices okay input devices will be there and most importantly okay we need to command something right so if we are providing some input cpu should process something and we need to produce some output right so mostly the output will be in the form of uh, relay outputs or uh, sometimes uh, you know alarm buzzers like this those are the outputs we used to produce using this access control system okay and most importantly when we need to provide this access so we need to create some conditions we need to assign each users so we need to create the identification credentials identification credentials can be of different thing it can be a biometric okay nowadays uh, in access control system it uh, they are using biometric okay uh, access cards okay access cards or uh, using the employee id access cards they are restricting the uh, entry and exit inside the concern location okay so where will i use this so it is used in okay lifts okay escalators elevators um, banks metro stations airports corporate offices air force homes multi storage buildings defense so like that in so many locations we can use this so as you can see how it looks like so this is how it looks like see here we have a card reader here okay so when we scan here only unless and until there is a valid card then only this barricade will open then we can enter inside okay and also as you can see here this is a simple example of a metro card as you can see here we have a card readers here okay so these are the restrictions so if you scan the card here then we can go through and we can get into the other side otherwise it is very difficult for it to uh, cross through this barricades okay so as you can see here these are the access control panels okay access control panels and these are the accessories that we are often using in the access control system mostly as you can see this is a card reader okay and um, we have a uh, magnetic logs and most importantly for all these equipments to run properly we need a power supply okay apart from it okay apart from it we have so many card reader technologies we have magnetic strip v guard v gant proximity infrared barcode smart cards optical storage like this so many new technologies are available in the market so this is how it looks like as, as you can see here this is a card reader and this is a emergency exit okay apart from it we have a car, uh, keys like this also using these uh, cards also uh, keys also we can access and most importantly this is uh, going to be the power supply and this is the output that is the lock okay so first and foremost thing is that a card reader so what is this card reader so it will be mounted on the wall mostly we will mount the, if this is a door okay so door right hand side or sometimes on the left hand side we used to install this card reader it is a electronically reads the credentials and send the request to unlock the door okay 
so most importantly it is held the 2 to 6 inches proximity to the readers okay so most importantly it will be uh, installed at the outer perimeter of the doors okay in addition to it okay apart from card reader if you if you want to access through the pins also you can access we have a keypads okay to type and the second most important thing is that the access door panels so as we told earlier if it is a very small applications mostly near the door top side okay if we have a fall ceilings above the fall ceiling normally we used to install this access door panels if it is a um, say for example if you are uh, if you are installing using a uh, controller okay access controller which has a, um eight inputs example until eight inputs and eight outputs in such occasions what we will do using a single access door panel we will be controlling the two room doors so consider this is the room 1 and this is the room 2 okay so in both the rooms we will have a uh, inputs one is a card reader input will be there card reader input will be there here also the card reader input will be there and also we will have a emergency push buttons also will be there inside the door so this is also will act as a uh, input and second most important thing is that uh, we will have an output that is the uh, magnetic locks magnetic locks which will be operated using the relays so it means uh, from a single access door panel we will be controlling two different doors so based on the number of inputs of the uh, card reader that we are going to use the uh, in a single panel set we can control multiple doors okay yeah, this is how this is the main important purpose of this access control doors so and most importantly if the valid card is presented near the card reader it is the duty of this access control panel okay which receives a request to unlock a specific relay so using that relay only we are going to operate the uh, door contact and door locks which is present on the field so if you want to magnetize or demagnetize it we need the help of a relay these relays will be inside this uh, access door panels next most important thing is that we are, if uh, it is a small project maybe uh, only with the access control panels we can do it but if it is a very big project okay uh, you have multi storage buildings so you are working on a multi storage buildings so most importantly we need a brain okay even though the controller alone is a brain but when it's come to the very big projects say for example if you are working for a multi story building you might have so many floors so in such occasions in each room we even we might be having many different access control panels so in such occasions if you want to control them okay you need a separate place separate pc okay to monitor to store all the data and most important you need to have a access database because if some uh, in emergency scenario is happening situation is happening or theft is happening if you want to identify who and all access to the concerned location concerned room then you need the access data so in order to store the access data save them in a proper way and you know to make the decision in a right manner we need the help of this servers so as you can see we can connect the server either through the electro yeah, ethernet switches and directly through the card readers we can connect this is one of the method if it is a very big project in a, what else we can do uh, most importantly uh, through the local host also we can control okay and most importantly here we will have a track of recording activities each and every event will be recorded here at what time concerned person entered the room at what time he got exit exit okay what had happened okay so all things will be there in it okay who and all can access who and all should not access all these details will be there and if you get into the specification about the access control system uh, most importantly we should uh, have a ethernet connectivity and most importantly and even though if you are providing a access controller a primary source of power supply it can be either 12 volt supply or in certain places we might be using 24 volt also but most importantly with the help of 12 volt supply we can access it but apart from the normal power source okay Uh, say for example uh, you might be having a smbs okay so you will be uh, connecting to 230 volt so this smbs will be converting that to 24 volt so this 24 volt uh, or sometimes we can uh, either use 12 volt supply, uh, 12 volt smbs also in such occasions you can connect the output from the smbs to the card readers so this is the primary source of supply but apart from it if this 230 power supply main power supply fails in such occasions we need backup power because these are the critical crucial things 
okay we can't say the the original power supply card won't work uh, the access control system is not working we can enter inside the building or you can't say that um, power supply is not there we can uh, exit from the building like that we, sh we should not uh, have any sort of reasons so even though uh, the primary main power is not available we should have a backup battery power so battery power we need to have and we need to connect those battery power with the access controllers so for that what are the standards that we can follow we can follow nfpa 70 standards for the battery backup okay and if you're going for the electrical codes you can read article 700 or nfpa 110 okay and most importantly okay as per the standard within 10 seconds okay we need to uh, the power supply should resume means uh, if this main power supply is getting failed immediately the backup power supply should resume within 10 seconds that is the important specification of it and most importantly we should know how many number of inputs and how many number of outputs are there so whenever okay whenever you are planning uh, a controller okay a controller always try to consider the i was somewhat 20 percent spare should be there say for example if you want to control eight input okay and uh, uh four output okay if you want to control eight input example i'm telling if you want to control uh four outputs with the help of eight input commands in such occasions it is better to choose okay uh, controller with the 10 number of inputs and six number of outputs why we are choosing something extra say for example if any sort of relays or a uh, no contact or nc contact fails in such occasions we can use the spare terminals we can use the spare terminals that is the reason we should always consider whenever you are planning for a number of inputs and outputs spare should be there and most importantly it should be designed in such a way okay, that it should be easy for maintenance and also emergency power backup should be there and most importantly for uh, the communication purpose we can use the easiest one that is rs485 communication why we are going for this rs485 say for example one uh, um, considered situation okay you have um, 10 floors okay considered situation you have a 10 floors okay now what is that considered situation you have a 10 floors you have a 5 control panels Okay. five control panels okay um, consider in each floor you have uh, four doors four doors to control in each floor you have a uh, four doors to control say for example it means uh, with the help of this five control panel we need to control the eight different uh, we need to control the 40 doors I'm just giving an example okay so 40 doors you need to control means uh, so one panel okay one control panel should control okay two floors first floor second floor like that so one control panel should control two floors okay one control panel should control two floors uh, it means uh, um, so here consider here one card reader is there here another card reader is there other three four so in order to have them in a loop uh, we need to have a communication loop that is rs485 communication between these card readers so in such occasion we can use this rs485 in this one one card reader will act as a master or maybe the starting card reader will act as a master and the others will act as a slave so these sort of settings these sort of wirings up even though if we wire apart from we need to keep the settings inside the card readers also those settings we will discuss so means uh, whenever you develop a plan always follow nfpa 731 standards for installation of electronic premises security systems and most importantly so this equipments since we are using 12 volt supply it will come under the category of elv systems extra low voltage systems okay and uh, how it is installed so this is um, always when uh, electronic access control equipments are installed it should be in accordance with UL 294 standard of the access control system units as you can see here we have a power supply unit okay and 
we have a card reader we have a card reader and most importantly we have a output device that is the sounder and most importantly in the emergency conditions if you want to exit the concern doors you need the brake glass support okay brake glass support and also we have a push button supports also push buttons okay and uh, sometimes and most importantly we have a door holder we have a door lock this is going to be an output device so this output device will be controlled by a relay from the access control panel okay and most importantly we also have a door position sensors and in case of any sort of fire okay we need to trigger the fire alarms also uh, we need to show the fire symbols also for that we need we have the fire alarm systems so it means uh, as integrated part okay in a single access control system okay in the unit we have this much equipments we have a enclosure we have a power supply unit we have a reader we have a sounder we have a brake glass uh, brake glass unit we have a push button to exit the doors normally these things will be present inside the room so even though if some person access through the card reader by scan scanning through the card reader if some person uh, entered inside the concern room inside the room for the safety sometimes if the card reader is not working if it has any sort of issues in such occasions he can use either brake glass or he can use the push button options next so how we can start the installation uh, how it is installed how the operations are done so most importantly first and foremost thing is that we need to plan we need to design first and foremost based on the design okay first thing is that we need to run the cables it means we need to install the cables next we need to install the card readers near the doors then we need to make setups and testings and we need to install the access control panels okay either it can be at the it room or sometimes uh, if you had a plan to establish uh, above the uh, doors okay it is better to install in a specific dedicated rooms it will be easy for controlling our uh, maintenance purpose otherwise what is happening consider a situation in this room you have a, a card reader magnetic lock okay electric uh, locks everything is there okay but inside the room if you have installed your control panel if you want to do so, any sort of maintenance it is very difficult to open this and do some, some sort of activities or during maintenance we might be disturbing the activity of the concerned persons who are working there so in, to avoid this either to go with the dedicated rooms next after this only we need to install the lock then we need to do the door schedule okay so when the door should be unlocked automatically without card readers when should it should be locked so those sort of conditions we can create and and also with the help of a co-workers with the different candidates we can test the systems okay and most importantly we need to set up the rules using the controlling softwares then we need to uh, monitor the door status so in the servers as we saw earlier using the pcs in the servers we need to monitor whether the concerned room uh, is open or not whether the concerned room uh, door is uh, okay closed or not uh, if there is any fires we need to know whether uh, the concerned room door is open or not all these things we need to do and most importantly during the uh, fire scenarios automatic unlock feature should be there and most importantly it need to create a reports also how it is fired as you can see in two methods uh, different methods we can do wiring so if you are con connecting a control panel which is very near to the door okay first and foremost thing is that so these card readers and the exit button these are going to be the inputs which will be connected to the uh, access control controllers inside the control panel okay and these are the outputs which you are going to control using the relays okay in the same way if you are going for a, a main control panel okay so we can connect the card readers this will be the input and this uh, exit buttons will also be the input and this will be is going to be your output this output you are controlling with the help of a relay which is present inside the access control panel so this is a very simple wiring uh, wiring diagram okay uh, nowadays if you are going for a very simple application as you can see here we have a power supply okay this is this is the one we had uh, provided a clarity here as you can see here so this is a card reader so we have four terminals so for the card reader to work properly 
uh, what are the connections that we are providing we are providing push connection we are connecting it to the ground and most importantly for it to work properly need a 12 volt supply so this 12 volt supply is also we are connecting to the card reader and in the same way okay and most importantly this is the lock so this if this lock has to work properly we need to connect them with either n or nc relays which is present inside it so with the help of it we are connecting with this so through the power supply 12 volt power supply we are going to uh, control this locks okay and in the same way uh, even sometimes for door or exit buttons also we can switches also we can use if it is so mostly this will be present at the n3 okay and if you are inside the room maybe inside the room you not exit outside you can use these options okay in the same way see here we have an smbs 12 volt smbs so normally we used to connect uh, the line and the neutral with a 230 volt single phase supply and it is converting the 230 to 12 volt dc and this 12 volt dc so for this uh, card readers access control system to operate properly for this um, most importantly for the magnetic locks to work properly they need the power supply so we are providing the 12 volt line supply to both the magnetic lock as well as to the access control system card readers so and most importantly for these two work initiate them we need a relay nc so if we swipe the card if the card is correct one then immediately it will give the demagnetizing output so that the magnetic lock will demagnetize so that the door will open automatically say for example using this you had uh, access inside the room now inside the room if the card is not working if you want to come outside so what you can do either you can press this uh, exit push button so that you can come outside so this uh, the, this is uh, also the same thing as you can see we have a 240 volt ac supply and this is the clarity view of how it is being wired this is the controller so for the controller to control on the magnetic lock to operate we need a 12 volt uh, supply and this is going to be your output relay outputs which will be controlling this electrical board and the magnetic locks okay uh, and also as you can see here so these two are going to be your inputs so as we told earlier if we are going to control with the pcs so you need the help of this rs485 communication cables so as you can see here so we uh, we might be using the intelligent card readers for most of our applications so these are the switches and these are the outputs and these are going to be the inputs these are going to be the inputs so from the card reader we have a provision of rs485 wire okay you know, so maybe consider this is going to be a main controller maybe from the uh, cable go from here we will get loop it to the other controller like the same it will be a slave like this we loop and loop and loop and uh, maybe the one final cable will also go to the post or main controller so as you can see here this is a very simple application we have a law so you're go going uh, your output okay and as you can see here this is going to be a controller and this is a card reader which will act as an input okay and as you can see here from the controller through the cat 6 through the internet switch we are establishing a connection okay and most importantly for this to operate we need to provide the power supply so as you can see we have multiple doors here so all the doors we have two inputs and these are going to be your outputs this locks magnetic locks is going to be the output and these will be operated with the relays and uh, from the card reader all the card reader we are having a communication cable which will be connecting to the ethernet hub from the ethernet hub we will establish a connection with the server so this is one of the method what is the other method that we can do in the other method uh, choose a access controller okay say for example as, as we discussed earlier choose the selector controller which has a capability to control two doors okay and have a separate panel for it okay inside this panel we have a access controller okay we have uh, four inputs and four outputs like that you choose a controller so that from this controller itself we can able to control the two doors of two different rooms in the same way we are controlling it and finally have a cat 6 or cat 5 cable from here establish a connection with the switches from the switch or a um, cisco switch or a, or the ethernet switch 
establish a connection with the server this is one of the method okay in the other method also possible how in a single main control panel itself we can connect all your door wirings through the rs485 communication line from the card readers so these are will act as are going to be act as a input okay and these are going to be your outputs which will be commanded by the relays from the controller and finally with the help of um, uh, switches terminal servers or the switches or ethernet hub connect it with the pc or the server where all the details will be stored if you want report it will produce reports everything will be available this is one of the method okay connecting everything directly to the main control panel in the other can other other way if it is a multi storage building so what you can do you can have okay door control panel for two rooms then through the rs485 communication connect those door control panels to the main control panel and finally from the main control panel through the servers or switches connect through the ethernet hubs connect it through the server this is the other method here these two will be uh, the inputs will which will be controlled and commanded by this door control panel and uh, the most importantly this will be the outputs which will be commanded through the relay which is present inside this door control panels this is one of the easiest method in other method what we can do either with the help of the control panel we can control the two rooms and directly through the ethernet switch we can connect it with the server thank you so much please subscribe and press the bell icon if you want to know more and learn more you can contact us we have provided the contact details here we lnp renewable system integrator we are providing plc programming training okay if you want to work in gcc countries especially for the metro projects uh, ship automation projects uh, multi storage building projects building management system building automation system we are providing trainings especially for plc program siemens allenbrook delta plc if you want to learn the basics of building management system and building automation system access control system you can contact us and also we are providing okay uh, solar fencing as a kit you might have an agriculture if you want to protect your crops from the wild animals instead of going for a normal fencing you can use solar fencing so we can provide them as a kit and also we are providing solar on grid off grid hybrid application solar street lights uh, as a product services and also we are providing design and consultancy services if you have any sort of requirements please contact us thank you so much so we shall meet in the next part